So why is independent wrestling so important? Let me count the ways. There are a few, but I'll, I'll keep it simple. Uh, let's start with where do you think the big companies like WWE, Ring of where do you think they get Matt Riddle and Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins is a big example there. Guys like Cesaro. A lot of the current crop of talent cut their teeth and started their wrestling careers on the independent scene. Very few wrestlers start with a career in OEVW or in in other companies of, the, of that nature. They cut their teeth, essentially, in the independent scene. Why is it so important? It's a spot to ply your craft. And it's the obvious question, but independent wrestling is so important because there's characters that you don't see on television, that you don't see in the big companies. Some of those characters are developed in the independent scene. Some are just so wacky that they couldn't exist anywhere else but the independent scene. A big example would be Joey Janela and his, in his series of spring break shows. So really, why is independent wrestling so important? Because it's not just the feeder system to the WWE and AEW and name another fed that you watch. It's important because it's, it's such a different environment that some of the best wrestlers in the world have cut their teeth into and have made their first mistakes in front of those crowds. And speaking from personal experience, why Kevin Owens or Kevin Steen, when he was known in the independent scene, why, do, why am I so much in love with him? Because what you see on TV, that's what you saw starting to develop in the independent scene. You see the future. You could see how you could see the past, but you could also see the future of professional wrestling. And you see some characters you just don't see anywhere else. As I mentioned in part one, Know Your Role opened my eyes to the possibility of wrestling RPGs, and Wild World Wrestling opened my eyes to their potential. As I'm wont to do, I dug around to see who else had taken the concept outside of the 20-sided die. One of the core concepts that was brought to my attention in the process was managing promotions as well as managing characters. This journey brought me to arguably the most comprehensive wrestling RPG available, Squared Circle. Does it hold up, or is it a case of book bloat? Let's find out. Squared Circle is fairly clear in its writing at 182 pages. And while the artwork is a bit sparse, there's a degree of consistency with the art style used, giving it a visual identity. That said, it does suffer from the same visual problem that Star Wars Saga Edition had, where art is reused in places. Now compared to our last entry, I'd say it's written a bit more neutral, with little in the way of in-character writing in the rules. Visually, it does its job, but it's not going to win any beauty pageants. Then again, as it's often said, wrestling is not ballet. For the purpose of character creation, we'll be bringing back Jaeger for our demonstration. The first step is attributes. There are six attributes in which we roll 4d6 and re-roll any dice that comes up as one. Fairly standard if you're familiar with d20. After making the rolls, we get the following results. Strength 18, Intelligence 15, Endurance 20, Charisma 19, Agility 22, and Speed 20. Step 2 is the wrestler class, of which there are five. Brawler, All-Rounder, Technical, High Flyer, and Powerhouse. Of these, we'll be going with High Flyer at level 1. Step 3 is Skill Selection. Now despite the name, skills here are more akin to ranked and independent edges in Fireborn, with their effects varying depending on how many points are spent. Given the initial attributes and the class picked, we have a total of 2 skill slots and 10 skill points. We'll go with 4 points in High Flyer and 6 points in Heat Generator. Step 4 is Moves, which Jaeger has 14 slots to spread between the varying types. He already starts with the basic group of moves. Going with the high flying motif, we'll go with Hurricane Rana, Enziguri, European Uppercut, Shining Wizard, Thrust Kick, Underhook DDT, Flying Head Scissors, Spin Wheel Kick, Moon Salt, Missile Drop Kick, Tornado DDT, and Springboard DDT. In addition, we choose one move to treat as a finisher, in which case it'll be a Corkscrew Shooting Star Press. 
Lastly, the finishing touches. While health and endurance are calculated based on the attribute and class, in this case 36 and 28 respectively, your starting money is a roll of 1d8 times 10,000. In Jaeger's case, he'll be starting with 70,000, and we'll be spending 50,000 of that for an extra skill slot and holding on to the rest as pocket money. Character creation is fairly familiar to those who've tangled with d20s before. However, there's a few things that people will likely have contention with, namely classes. This is going to depend on the players, but I could see the argument being made that a class system in a wrestling RPG is counterproductive. At the very least, it's done in a matter that isn't too restrictive. For me personally, the main issues I have are with the skill system and the way moves are presented. I get the idea with skills here, but some of the skills listed could be written out better to demonstrate their restrictions. It's the reason I compared it to the ranked and independent edges in Fireborn. As for the latter, the idea that moves are preset does bug me, but at least the NPC section has some spreads that can be used for helping out with creation. On the other hand, organizing them in the same manner as you'd see from a 2K video game strikes me as a little bit too crunchy. Much like our last entry, Squared Soaker uses a d20-based system for its matches, but where things change a bit is how it handles initiative. While it's still a contested roll, using a d10 in this case, every move can cause the opponent to suffer a cumulative minus one penalty to initiative up to minus five. This penalty is reset when the opponent regains initiative, effectively acting as a momentum system. Moves are performed with endurance, and this is where the d20 comes in. Each move has a failure number modified by your class. If you beat this number, you perform the move. The defender can spend three endurance to attempt an evasion, making an evade roll that has to beat the attacker's move. Optionally, the defender can attempt a reversal by spending either three endurance or using one of their automatic reversals. Performing the former requires a roll that beats the attackers by three. Either way, after a move is performed and its damage is resolved, the wrestler in question gains heat. Heat in Squared Circle isn't an extra effort mechanic, but rather a form of momentum. You can get up to 100 heat per match, and this can be a factor for modifying overness and experience gain after the match. Now compared to the last game, pinfalls and submissions are a bit crunchier. In the case of making a pin, the amount of health and endurance the pin character lost determines how many chances to break the pin he has. Breaking the pin is a percentile roll, starting at 50% and modified by the damage of the last move inflicted. Submissions, on the other hand, start with a contested d6 roll to maintain the hold. If the attacker wins, he can force a percentile roll to determine if they tap out. This roll gets gradually harder as the hold is maintained for longer amounts of time. On paper, it's not too difficult to manage, but it does have the problem of subsystem excess. As I've mentioned before, there's an emphasis on games trying to use as few dice roll types as possible, often using just one type. Squared Circle has d20 and percentile rolls, which goes against this unification mandate. Once again, I could see this game being a little too crunchy for some, especially with all those charts. I personally don't have a problem with that, being a graduate of Rollmaster's Chart Hells, but a GM screen would work wonders here. There's a fair bit of debate that can be had between Squared Circle and Wild World Wrestling, since they both dip into the same proverbial pool of highly customizable wrestling RPGs. I don't think either one is necessarily better, but rather different. To use a video game analogy, Wild World Wrestling is akin to Fire Pro Wrestling World, while Squared Circle is akin to a WWE 2K game. Squared Circle is very comprehensive in its approach, not just for the wrestlers themselves, but managing the promotion as well. The situational setup of moves is something that people who play the 2K games should be able to delve into fairly easily. All this detail comes at a cost, though. The game is significantly more simulationist and less freeform, as if it's built from the perspective of being a traditional RPG. If one chooses to use the promotion creation and management systems, akin to GM mode from SmackDown vs. Raw, which unfortunately I didn't have time to delve into, be prepared for a lot of tracking. Now taking all this into account, the best grade I can give this game is recommended. Squared Circle is a damn fine game, but it's one that's built more for people with an RPG background than a wrestling video game one. I would add the caveat that if you can get the core book and its expansions for a good price, get on that. However, not every game is going to be so crunchy. Next time we'll be delving into the more rules light end of the equation in this fascinating genre. And the return of the almighty ampersand.